Hello and welcome back to another episode of One of Us is Talking. I am here today with Melissa Colazzo. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so yes, excited. Everyone <laughs> is so excited for a Maeve episode. Everyone's like, I want to hear from Melissa about Maeve. So I have a ton of questions and I'm so excited to ask. And are you good to just jump right in? Yeah, let's go. Perfect. So starting from the very beginning, what was your audition experience for Maeve like? Ooh, okay. Um, so we were the first auditions it's like we I started auditioning like summer of 2019 and the first audition that I got was a like a self-tape request for Bronwyn so I was like uh I was unfamiliar with the book because like I was I was 19 so I wasn't really like reading much YA anymore um but I like I deep dived into the research and I like I did a little like uh like all of the friend groups because it's like oh Addie, TJ, Cooper and then like all the coinciding things or whatever I like did all the research so I could make sense of like that world and I like I put a lot of work into that Bronwyn audition because I was like oh this is like super fun and it said that like Jennifer Morrison was going to direct the pilot and she had like freshly just come off of like doing the Euphoria Maddie episode so I was like oh this is like an incredible project so I like put a lot of work into the Bronwyn audition didn't hear anything I was like, okay, whatever, move on. A couple weeks later, I get another self-tape request, same project, but for Addie. And I was like, okay, I'm already a bit familiar with the story. I know that Addie's like the princess, like she's like the perfect, like popular, like everything seems perfect type girl. Um, so I was like, okay, maybe they saw my Broadway audition and decided that I was like too girly or something because like I know I ended up playing Maeve but like me as Melissa I'm I'm I think I'm pretty separate from that like I'm a lot more like gentle and girly and, and you know <laughs> more so, of like the Addie side exactly exactly like in terms of like aesthetic perhaps mm -hmm. um, so I did my Addie audition heard nothing like a month later I get a third audition this time it's for Maeve and at this point I'm like they're messing with me they're <laughs> playing with me like this is the third one I get but there's no notes like I didn't I didn't hear at any point like oh they like you but they want you to read for this like it was just like oh here's another one I was like what this is crazy but um so I got the Maeve one and those scenes were like the shortest I think they sent me like three like half page scenes because and it was like all the scenes from the pilot which Maeve is not in it a lot it's like one or two lines where she's just being like mischievous and like you don't totally trust her and you don't know much yet so I taped that and then the next day I got like a call back they're like they love you um they want you to do like a longer scene so I got um a new scene that was like two or three pages long and it's just me and Bronwyn and in, it's a scene that like was never in any episode or made it into the show or anything so I feel like it was almost written for the callback just to see what I could do with it because like at that point um the season wasn't written because it was just a pilot and they didn't know if it was going to get picked up or not um so I think they wrote it because there wasn't enough for Maeve to do in the pilot so like it was a new scene where like um it's like Maeve and Bronwyn and uh they're like doing their homework together in Bronwyn's room or something like that and I can't remember what it what we're totally talking about but I vividly remember one line which is like I miss it when you were the perfect kid and I was the fuck up and like that's how it ends and I think it like perfectly captured their dynamics I was like okay I don't know where in the in the story this like plays out but I guess at this point like Bronwyn's in trouble and like uh <laughs> so I taped that I submitted it and then they're like great the the the, the producer wants to meet with you like can you do a meet I was like great any new scenes or like whatever and they're like no no new scenes they just want to talk to you and I was like oh that's promising usually like when it's like when I'm you know gonna meet with the people behind the scenes like and have an actual conversation with them like they want to like workshop the scenes a little more or anything but um 
they just wanted to talk to me. So I had like a little like Skype meeting with uh, Erica and we just talked for like half an hour and I thought it went well, but I didn't know much. She kind of just told me, she's like, oh yeah, so we're going to be like shooting in November. Do you have any like uh, other projects that you're going to be busy with? And I was like, oh, well, I'm shooting because uh, I was about to go shoot Freaky at the oh. time. So uh I was like, oh, well, I'm going to be working on this movie up until this week. So it would only coincide by like a week. And she's like, good to know. Like, it was so lovely meeting you. Have a good day. And I was like, okay. So it wasn't much. And then like uh, my first week on Freaky, my first day on Freaky, I was like already so nervous because it was like the first like real like feature film that I had booked and I was I was trying to prove myself I was like putting in the work like also like my character and freaky is like a huge mean girl she's like awful and that's <laughs> so not me so I was like I was so nervous I was like oh my god this is like I'm gonna do like real acting right now for the first time like this is so I'm so nervous break for lunch my manager texts me he's like hey are you busy and I was like no what's up uh and they just call me and he's like, you booked a series off of tape. Like you booked a series regular, like a lead, like good job. And I was like, for what? <laughs> and they're like, one of us is lying. And I was like, oh, what? Like, it was truly so shocking because I just did like, I just like recorded myself on my phone doing like a couple scenes and then had like a conversation with the producer. And I just like, like, I never met them in person. I didn't know who else was cast. Like I knew nothing. I like landed in Vancouver a week after everyone else did because I had to rap freaky and like that's when I found out uh who was playing who like I had no idea they didn't tell me like who the other cast members were like it's I truly like I went from one project to the next and like just immediately prepped and like the only intel I had about Maeve beforehand was uh Jennifer Morrison had emailed me and was like what do you think about this and she just like attached a picture of uh Tokyo from Money Heist like her haircut mm -hmm. um and I was like down and I think that that like told me everything I needed to know about the character so I like I went in and I like rode with it but that was such a long explanation but yeah that was like it's it's uh that was my audition experience it was two other characters before they uh had me read for Maeve and I I just like uh, it was so easy. Maeve was like the easiest because it was the one character that I was like not like uh, doing a lot of like research and like prep for because there wasn't much to her. Like the second book hadn't come out yet. So like there was really nothing yeah. online and even in the first book to like work off of uh, in terms of her. So mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I kind of have just like free reign here. And I guess I just really fit the part of like the... Um, annoying little sister <laughs> oh, you were the perfect Maeve so seeing how that kind of like all came together yeah <laughs> but yeah that's that's uh that's how the audition process went for me I think it was uh different to everyone else's because everyone else was like going in the room and doing chemistry reads and like all of this stuff and I just like uh didn't do any of that but I almost think it like is like poetic in terms of like Maeve because that is how she is like she doesn't really interact with anyone and she sort of just like shows up <laughs> which is what uh, I did in real life and I think it was very like uh yeah it was it was uh the character but just in real life <laughs> I mean that's yeah. so cool to hear and I mean you this all happened back in 2019 then we get mm -hmm. shut down because of a pandemic so <laughs> <laughs> and then it's not until 2021 that you guys all go back and not only has it been now two years but New Zealand that's yeah. so far away so what was it like getting back into that character after almost a year and a half um well, it was heartbreaking to get that haircut again <laughs> because uh, a year and a half gave me time to like grow my hair back out again. Um, but apart from that, it was like, it was easy because like, um, I felt like I was on a roll. Cause like I said, I had like just come off of the freaky set and I had a day, I wrapped freaky. I had one day to pack to go to Vancouver for like almost a month. 
And then I got to Vancouver and like, I told you Jennifer Morrison sent me that picture of like Tokyo from Money Heist. And she's like, this character really like suits like sort of like what we're going for. Like we want her to be edgy. Like uh, the character description for my Maeve audition as well was like, uh, like edgy sort of like punk little sister who's like up in like everyone's business or something like that. So, and then they sent, I was like, okay, I can do edgy and punk, like, uh, easy. Um, but, uh, then she sent the picture of Tokyo and I know I like, I had already been a huge fan of Money Heist and I know that like her character is very like tough and stubborn and like it's her (laughs) way or no way sort of thing. So I started rewatching the show on the plane and like in Vancouver, um, And I know that Tokyo's character was like the inspiration for Tokyo was Matilda from Leon the Professional, which is like the the Natalie Portman movie she did when she was 12. It was like her, she has like the same haircut and she dresses just like Maeve. She has the little choker and everything. And like uh, Natalie's my favorite actress ever. So like I was very familiar with that movie. So I just rewatched Leon the Professional where she's like, this like she's a little kid who gets put in sort of like the worst situation and becomes like a tough like also stubborn like little like badass bitch about it so (laughs) I was just consuming both of those characters and like I was making I made like a Pinterest board just because I feel like I work really well with like visuals and stuff so I made a Pinterest board just for like her whole aesthetic and I was like making playlists with like a lot of like uh those like riot girl like 90s songs just like angry like women um and so like even though there's not a lot of her in the pilot I think I just like created her as like a human um and it made the scene sort of like hopefully at least like uh, I would hope uh, read a certain way like you could you could get a feel for her before you even really knew her um, so when I came back like in 2021 like <laughs> a half later um, I just like went back on the playlist I started listening to it so much I like I rewatched Money Heist I rewatched Leon I I just like I checked myself back in because I also like had um I bought like a notebook and I just like filled it with like her interest, what she did to kill time in the hospital, why she ended up like the way she is. Like I see her like, um, like I think her wardrobe and like the haircut, it's a way to like uh, get attention to who she is as a person so that people don't see her as weak because all she's ever experienced is like weakness, not by will, but just because she like you know, had cancer for as long as she did. And like, everyone treats her so fragile. So I'm like, oh, she dresses like this because she wants to be seen as tough. She like, doesn't want to let that define her. So like, I made every little like detail about her make sense to me. So like, I just, I reread the notebook. I started filling it so much more. So like, and then like, we got the scripts for the rest of the season. So I knew where she was going. And like, lucky for me, it like, aligned with like the vision I had for her so like it was it was perfect it was like it was very scary obviously because like I hadn't acted I hadn't like worked on a single thing like throughout the pandemic up at that point because it was almost nothing was shooting things were just coming back so I was nervous to like act again because I was like what if I forgot how to uh be in front of a camera (laughs) like I was very (laughs) but once I got over that checking into the character was like piece of cake it was so fun and then they chopped my hair like so much shorter than even the pilot like they were like I was like oh that's my cheekbone okay (laughs) um but you know I powered through it and I think uh just even just looking in the mirror and seeing someone who like I don't really recognize because I've never had short hair like my whole life ever since it like grew as like I've only ever had like long hair and like wispy little bangs and stuff and that haircut's so intense that I think even just like looking in the mirror from that point forward and not really recognizing Melissa helped me just like check into Maeve like immediately because I'm like this is a tough haircut and if I don't (laughs) if I'm not confident about it that's gonna read and Maeve is someone who like does not give a shit she's like so confident and like crass about everything that I was like I have no choice but to like like this and make people like know that I like it so it like it it was easy I think the haircut was like a huge uh like stepping into it type 
for me. Yeah. Because you're saying how you're completely like almost the opposite of Maeve and then you <laughs> kind of get thrown into the, and it's true. Like I'm sure that haircut was very much like, that was like Maeve for you. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, imagine like you, like if, if, if someone like shapes your head for something, <laughs> you're going like, to start like acting a little different. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. Like it, that was, I think the haircut helped a lot. <laughs> and you definitely brought a lot to Maeve, which is really cool to hear, like the journal and and it's true, kind of building Maeve out because up until that second book, Maeve was more. Yeah. Of, and I think that's one thing the TV show did well, bringing Maeve like to the forefront. So it was nice to see you in that position and role and then having like a Maeve. And I mean, I think season two was definitely different for me. There was much more screen time and interaction, but are there any characters you wish you had more time with? Oh, I think um, Vanessa. I think uh, if we had gone for a third season, there would have been maybe like a sort of like little team up because I feel like they're two different sides of the same coin in the sense that like they could not be like, outwardly more different they're so like I mean Vanessa's like perfect like Barbie Sarah's like gorgeous she like was really like in her fucking bag doing that role like she like was she ate she was so good but uh and then Maeve is like quite the opposite but like there is a sort of like they like to do their nails there's like a little bit girly like Maeve is someone who like loves like a cute little like like a really intense like like her makeup like there was like there's common ground in that but also I think like they both are just like ultimately in search for the truth um and they go about it in ways that not everyone and by everyone I mean literally everyone else on the show agrees (laughs) um but they're tough bitches and I think if they were able to like sit down for long enough and have a conversation they realize they would realize that they're very mutually beneficial to each other um in terms of like getting to the truth because I think like at their core both of them want the same thing out of uh the group so I think um Maeve and Vanessa would have been such an interesting like uh team up because it's kind of the opposite of what you would expect Mm -hmm. but it makes so much sense and like I also just like I would die for Sarah I would take a bullet for her like I would like just selfishly I would love to have worked with her so much more um and then I think the second character would be Nate because in the book especially the second book um they have such a like wonderful relationship like I think it's like the the purest like just like most like tender relationship out of all of the like platonic relationships in the in the book series and in the show um I wish we could have experienced that a little more sort of Maeve just being like a or sorry uh Nate being sort of like a the older brother I never had because like he cares about Bronwyn so much that like his the love that he develops for Maeve is so genuine and like um in the second book like she's the first one to tell him that she like thinks she has cancer again and like she gets that nosebleed in front of him and they like they hang out on the roof sometimes like it's like it was just like such a sweet thing to read that like I do wish um Nate and Maeve would have had um more time to just like develop because we never like I love Cooper my scenes with him are so fun but like we never really moved past the sort of Maeve being like yeah huh about him and I wish we had uh gotten past that because I think Nate and Maeve would have been awesome yeah I know Cooper when I had talked to him he said the same thing he wanted to Mm -hmm. see Nate with Maeve and I'm like that would have been that would have been I love Cooper it would have been he's such a talented he's so brilliant he's such a like like a heartthrob like he's like when we like just from filming the pilot like all of us were like oh my god if like if like uh if like j14 was like still like at its peak the way it was like 10 15 years ago like he he would be like 
four of the posters in there. Like yeah. he's the, like classic little like the OC type like heartthrob. It's so perfect. Yeah. Um, it's totally but yeah, I, could have, I wish I could have worked with uh, Cooper more um, or not with more because we were on screen together quite a lot, but more just like not just like butting heads the whole time. I do wish yeah. that that had been um, developed a little more. And yeah. I'm sure it would have been, but you know. That would have been so nice to see. And I think even with um, Vanessa, there's kind of hints in there with you, with um, Maeve and Vanessa. Like they'd kind of have like, like scenes together where they didn't agree, but like you could kind of. There's yeah. just like a little bit of like a, a little something there. Yeah. yeah. And Sarah, I mean, she's the absolute sweetest. She was the first celebrity that I had ever interviewed. Aww. And I interviewed her for, it was like a one of us is lying promo for Young Entertainment Mag. And they like reached out to me on Twitter and they're like, do you want to do an interview for one of us is lying? And I was like, yes. <laughs> so I talked with Sarah and I interviewed her and I was so nervous beforehand. Like I gave myself a fever. I was like, oh my gosh. I'm oh my God, no. <laughs> I was so nervous. That's awful. And she got on and she was so sweet. So She's Sarah was going to have such a special ever. place. Yeah. I think, I mean, I think in terms of that too, like we're both um two girls who in real life are very like separate from um how our characters sort of behave on screen um and I think there's like a mutual understanding of like oh we know how to like check into this so like it makes it really fun it's it's the best yeah and did you have any favorite scenes to film Ooh, um for season one I think my favorite was uh the Geneve just like the whole uh homecoming episode um because it was the first time that I got to work with uh Jess on camera apart from that the funeral like the wake scene at the beginning or not at the beginning sort of towards the end of the second episode where it's like oh do, do they know each other um so just like shooting with that whole scene that whole not that whole scene that whole episode with Jess was just like so beautiful um so that's my favorite from season one and then from season two god everything I just like I can't pick because it was so exciting to just like do so much more <laughs> in the in the second season and just like interact with everyone so much more maybe maybe in episode five when uh they sort of come out to me as like non-binary after I, I like uh <laughs> climb all over them <laughs> um, I'm like yeah I know how we can uh kill some time I think is my line or something like that I think that whole um uh that whole like chunk was very fun to film because that sort of was shaped um by Jess and I quite a bit so it was really exciting um to let uh the idea we had like the same idea like when we talked about the scene um we had like the same idea of like how it should go and how everything could be and like uh it's lucky that we're super like uh we're lucky that we're very comfortable with each other so like um it was very easy but just sort of like uh yeah we kind of like improved a bit of it which is why I think it feels so like tender and sweet because like we are like poking fun at each other um and yeah it was my favorite we just got to like riff with each other and it was it was uh super fun and I'm glad that it was like uh shot and edited in a way that like it did translate like really beautifully on screen yeah, so I, I was that's my favorite moment I was just screen. gonna say oh sorry <laughs> that oh, did so well and I think that scene was a fan favorite scene and mm -hmm. I had just talked um with the fan and we did a whole episode on Maeve and they had uh -huh. the same thing that was their favorite uh -huh. scene so I feel like it just translated that's to the really, so that's well. really nice it was like it was just such a it was such a sweet tender shoot day and like I love Jess I would die for them I wish I could uh you know have a million more scenes with them so it was I'm glad that the fans really like it as well yeah it was I mean I feel like too it was just the Christmas episode and it yeah. fit in really well with that and you guys were 
funny but also like serious so mm-hmm. it was such a great conversation oh actually um that scene where we're all like uh quote unquote drunk at uh in Addie's mm-hmm. uh house before Nate and Cooper show up that was such a fun day to shoot because like um it was Roxanne the director it was her first day uh shooting with us because uh she had been shooting Vanessa's episode up until that point so that was the first time that all of us got to work with Roxanne and uh it was fake wine it was literally just like grape juice and like (laughs) it was like we were never it was all like pretend but like they let us like improv the whole beginning so when I'm like ew why did you look at me when you said that like all that stuff and I'm like like we just like they're like just act how you would whatever or like even when Addie's like offering she's like red or white and like Brahman and I both go oh red that was like when we were rehearsing when we rehearsed we sort of just will like uh fuck around a little more and like Marianne and I did that and we both looked at each other and we're like wait that was so funny we like we have to do that and the director was like that hilarious keep it in so like even that we're like both like red and then we just give each other like a look because we're both like pissed off at each other at this point um so like that was improv the whole like it was all improv and I think we like it was so fun because I was like oh Jess just like lay on me and I'll like put my fingers in your hair and just like I don't know just like because like that's how I am with my friends when I'm like you know we're like two or three glasses of wine deep and like talking about boys and like you know just being like that so we all just like I think the excitement like got us a little like drunk almost (laughs) Um, so I have to say that was like so fun to shoot um it'd be like my second favorite scene to have such a fun scene to watch Mm -hmm. and I think hearing how all of these are like um I can't think of the word kind of made up as you go yeah 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 cool to hear that and even that Bronwyn and Maeve moment with the wine that's like just such a sister kind yeah. of reaction because yeah. I have I have a younger sister and I'm like that's how, how how much younger. <laughs> what how much younger is she only 18 months younger so God, oh that's so Maeve and Bronwyn yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <Damn. wait>. <laughs> <laughs> but and then we had Maeve's ending and the season finale, which Aww. it was very <laughs> interesting. And do you think she was right for wrong? I mean, right or wrong, I'm all justice for Maeve. I I, I could not agree more. I think uh, she was so right. And uh, the fact that the show ended with that sort of like open ending, I guess, uh, with like Maeve, it's like... Uh, Maeve versus everyone I think that she was uh completely in the right she couldn't have been more right like we've seen two seasons of these characters like blowing her off and ignoring her even though she's like consistently proven to sort of just like uh I don't want to say the smartest because like I think she thinks she's the smartest I can wholeheartedly say like Maeve thinks she's smarter than Bronwyn because that is how I played it. I do think Bronwyn is very smart though. She's incredibly intelligent, but Maeve thinks she's smarter than Bronwyn. Um, And we've seen her uh, just continuously for two whole seasons, like save their asses. And like, just like, I mean, she literally did keep them out of jail. I think she did the right thing. Even if they like, I don't know, like even as like Melissa, I would rather my friends hate me but not be in prison forever and they can hate me forever than like them just be in jail and I just like talk to them like through a glass forever. That's like so silly, of course. I don't care. I think she was completely right. I would, yeah, she would do it again. Oh no, it was a hundred percent right, especially because they weren't really getting anywhere. So it wasn't no no Maeve did what the rest of them were incapable of doing she like she literally like she tricked uh Simon Says and none of them had successfully done that and I think she went about it in not the best way but also like there was no other way that would have worked because they were so dismissive of her the whole time so yeah and you had Bronwyn who was putting the fake money out so she yep. was trying it in her ways So Mm -hmm. Maeve just did it a little bit more intense, but I think that was the only way they could have got to 
but it worked and we got Fiona's fingerprints on the gun and uh nobody died we almost did but uh we didn't <laughs> so <Everyone lived>. exactly <laughs> that's the most important. what's a what's a sprained arm <laughs> like, <laughs> you know everyone lived we're fine <laughs> exactly and I mean in my head hopefully after everything in the series finale that they did get Maeve was back into the group and they didn't yeah. hate her um but what about in your head where is Maeve after that finale moment I think my hope for season three was that uh she would uh I I I don't think there's anything she wouldn't be able to come back from because I think she's almost like a she's like a baby Simon in some ways which I guess sounds like really awful to say but like <laughs> is a reason that they were like attracted to each other and like he uh you know let his guard down around her which he doesn't do around anyone um and she sh he saw her in a way that like no one else did like he saw her as a person and he wasn't like he never like invalidated her like I you know I think uh there was like a very there was a mutual understanding there of them sort of being like wrongfully on the outside I think he just went about it in like a more like resentful towards the world way whereas like Maeve isn't resentful she's sort of just like thick-skinned and won't let anyone in too quickly um yeah. but uh I think uh she was gonna go I was I was hopeful that I would at least get to like be like uh let Maeve be a villain for most of the season like I was really I was hopeful that like she would maybe be the season three villain um just because like it does end with like like she has all the reason to just like go ape shit and just like be the villain so I was kind of hopeful that they would maybe just let me like dive into that for maybe like two-thirds of the season and then like they all make up and maybe something else happens because I know that like the Bronwyn bloody necklace thing like <laughs> I would I would love to know yeah how that <laughs> um maybe maybe it's Maeve's involved maybe she's not I don't know like I uh I was hoping that they would just let Maeve have her um villain era for a little but ultimately like not all the way I suppose because I, I I don't think that there's anything she can't come back from I think she would have made up with them but I think it would have been like there would have been uh sides I think season yeah. two would have been like dividing even the people you think uh couldn't be divided okay so in yeah. terms of like who's who's apologetic and forgiving towards Maeve and who um isn't and I think that would have been uh really interesting so that's that's my hope. I, I kind of wanted her to just like be uh, totally like unhinged and like off the shit for a while. It was, <laughs> that would have been so like fun for me as an actress. Yeah. Um, but then ultimately like, yeah, she she does make up with everyone and then maybe finally has like a good relationship with Bronwyn. That would have been really nice to, <laughs> to see. Um, but yeah, that's kind of, that's how I see it. Yeah, no, I mean- even with the whole Fiona, we don't know who tried to kill her kill her, or did kill her. So maybe Maeve had a part in that. Just something, like you said, to be like that villain for like half the I season. Was, I feel like it was Jake's brother. That could definitely, I mean, because he kind of left on an open note too. With I think, I think, yeah, I think it was, I feel like, I feel like it was Jake's brother that tried to poison her and like finish it off. That makes a lot of sense that's that's my theory at least yeah because I know I I'm sure I I like I think that they would have uh I think he would have come back as like an even like maybe maybe the like big bad of season oh, three wow. it okay. makes sense yeah. like it all like my my idea was like Maeve's gonna go like villain mode and like that'll be our main focus but like she's not actually and then the actual big bad of season three is Jake's brother that was kind of my my that little have been a good and like one. Maeve's, the, Maeve's the distraction of the season everyone thinks that like she's the big bad and then like they make up with her 
but then whatever the storyline was going on and she's like guys that's not me and then that okay that would have been let me they should let me write the third (laughs) (laughs) and Bronwyn and Maeve have like a kind of rocky relationship well not even kind of a very rocky relationship yeah (laughs) you and Marianne have such good chemistry as sisters does that translate kind of in real life too oh completely I she like I I think she's the closest thing I've had to like a real sister because um I just have one little brother like I'm I don't have any sisters in real life um and uh she she helped me in terms of Maeve because she has sisters but she's the baby of her family in real life so Mm -hmm. she's like I know what it's like to to be Maeve like I know what how you feel like when Bronwyn's pushing back she's like I know like I've been in your shoes my whole life so it's funny that I'm like on the other side of it now but um Marianne and I are like the opposite of Maeve and Bronwyn like we're not like we've never like like butted heads over anything like she's like one of my best friends I love her so much she really is like an older sister to me um no she's brilliant I would I would die for her. I love her so dearly. I think that's what made the scenes so fun because it felt like such a, it felt like we were being real actors because like not, like none of what we're doing on screen um, is anything like how we are in real life at all. So it made it really fun yeah. to just like be mad at each other and like butt heads all the time because like we'd yell cut and immediately just like wrap each other up in each other's arms and just like mess around all day. It was like, it was the funnest, but it's, we could not be more different in the in the best way. And I think that really translate well on screen because you get to see your acting and how you're butting heads in the show, but there is like that warmth underneath maybe. Oh, and yeah. Where you can tell like they care about each other. They just can't get on the same level. No, no, because they both, the, I mean, I think they're like the two most stubborn characters in the whole show which makes perfect sense that they're both sisters. Like it, it's like a Rojas thing. Um, <laughs> but uh, because they both think that they're the smartest, but they both think that they're the smartest in very different ways, which is why like they want the same thing, but they want to go about it in like the most polar opposite directions ever, which is why they can never agree on anything. But ultimately like they want the same thing. So yeah. yeah. No, definitely. And I mean, kind of going off that, how the cast kind of became a family to you. What was it like filming in New Zealand in terms of homesickness and missing your family and friends? How did you deal with that? It was definitely hard. Like New Zealand is such a gorgeous, beautiful country, but like we would shoot during like, um, American summers which are New Zealand winters because the seasons are like flipped over there so we were going from like winter over here to winter over there back to like fall and winter over here back to fall like it was like just like two consecutive years of like skipping summers basically um, and only getting a little bit of spring Um, so I think that that made it hard like uh, mentally for sure um And during season, season two was a lot smoother because we had a lot of like family and friends visit because we could this time. But when we were shooting season one, um, the borders were closed because of COVID. Um, New Zealand was still like a COVID free country at that time. Um, So like in order to go into the country, you needed like a, a, like a work visa and like a valid reason. So we couldn't have like anyone visit us, like unless one of us was like dying or something, like there was no way we could have had like anyone visit. So we like truly only had each other and then like the weather during the winter months over there is so insane that we really couldn't travel uh the north island and the south island that much because like if we got stuck somewhere and then we couldn't get back for filming so like we just we truly just like only had each other and like just stayed in Auckland which is like a decently small city so I think it was like it was we we bonded in like the most like under the maybe the worst circumstances it was like the best case scenario so like I think that like 
we were going to become a family whether we wanted to or not it's just like <laughs> very lucky that we all ended up just like loving each other yeah because that and that's a long time to be with the same group of people in the mm-hmm. same area and like just completely away from home so that's yeah that's yeah okay. you know, we we truly like we were there for each other uh during like the most insane moments like <laughs> anything that you think happened like yeah we were probably going through something like it was just like (laughs) we were like holding each other's hands through like sicknesses and like it was uh no it was we got we all got very very uh familial yeah that's great to hear and again that translated so well onto the screen and you could just see it with all the characters Mm -hmm. and I think as one of us is lying fans I feel like we didn't get to hear a lot about behind the scenes and kind of see that so do you have any good behind the scenes stories that you can share? Hmm. I'm trying to think. I mean, I can tell you the most embarrassing thing that happened to me. Um, then okay. We can save that for the my next question because these are okay. hot seat questions. Gotcha. Okay. Let me think uh behind the scenes. Honestly, like we would uh there's so many TikToks in my TikTok drafts <laughs> that we made, but like I don't have a public account. So I think I just like have to send them to like the other girls or something to have them post. But like we uh we were we messed around so much when we weren't shooting because like sometimes the setups like to turn around and like move the cameras around and stuff would take so long that we would just like go in the green room and like make TikTok. We would like rehearse the scenes in like different accents like we just like just for fun like just to like because we all like knew what we wanted to do we would like I don't know it was a lot of uh Kareem or Chib or someone would like bring their speaker to the green room and we'd like blast music and just like have a dance party like it was like yeah just a bunch of random fun stuff but it was always so fun we'd have a lot of fun in the makeup trailer I will say there's always a lot of pictures from the makeup oh trailer. yeah makeup trailer is so fun <laughs> especially for the girls I think like we just you know it was like a wonderland in there yeah. so I think uh, yeah just like a lot of like like it, it it felt like a party even on set in the best way but like we were only um having fun because we were all so like prepared and like on our shit like there was not a single person in this production that was like unprepared or like you know not not like everyone like we only had as much fun as we did because everyone like was so on it which is awesome because that's not a privilege you get um in every job I think so yeah no definitely I mean those were great answers thank you for the one of us is lying section but are you ready for some hot seat questions yeah let's do it so what was the most embarrassing thing that happened to you (laughs) on set um so like I said we shoot in the winters uh Auckland winters are not snowy but they are insanely rainy I think it rained like 85 to 90 percent of the time we were there um and I think it's episode four it's yeah I think it's episode four where we go to the abandoned water park because we he like uh Simon says tells us to go and like we see the the uh the body on the ground that ends up being Giselle's but for a second we like think it's Addie's and then like everyone gets that text or whatever um so in that scene where like uh we hear like Addie scream and then we're all like running there's one super wide shot where the body's just like at the bottom of the frame the whole time and we're like running with like a it was like a like a 20 second run like they wanted us to start super super far behind and then just like cut it wherever they wanted to but they wanted us to run for a while so by the time they like whatever they did decide to include in the cut we're like already like pacing like we're we're really in it um it was super rainy um and they had set like a like a wooden panel down on the floor for traction but it got so wet that it did the opposite. And I kid you not, I'm running for like 20 seconds. 
and like that panel is like the first thing in the shot that's like in perfect focus the second that my foot touched that panel I ate shit like crazy I literally (laughs) flew I like I flew like (laughs) crazy and immediately like fell on like my on my butt and my like hands like I scraped up my hands like crazy like it hurt so bad I like had a bruise like on my butt and like (laughs) down my spine for like a couple weeks after that it was so embarrassing because it's also like the first point in this where like I'm in focus so I was like oh the camera caught all of this perfectly (laughs) and then to make it even funnier um (laughs) Jess is such a professional that they just want to stay in it the whole time (laughs) and like the second they heard me fall they turn around and they go like they literally they didn't even say Melissa they just tried to stay in it (laughs) <laughs> and they like screamed Maeve because they're like oh maybe there's a chance that like we can roll with it and I was like ow <laughs> but uh yeah and the whole crew was just on the other side watching me do that it was very, <laughs> it was very humbling um and you know I tried to play it off and be fine but it was very embarrassing um I wish they'd released a blooper reel because I'm sure that that would have <laughs> been the first thing on the like that was so embarrassing it was so unbelievably embarrassing that's like the most horrific thing that ever happened to me but uh yeah I I ate shit (laughs) I love how Jess stayed in character that's like I know it was so (laughs) because then they yelled cut and I was like did you say me you bitch like it was uh, and they were like I was just trying to say it I was like Jess (laughs) <laughs> but yeah it hurt so bad oh that's my, easily oh the most embarrassing thing that's happened to me <laughs> in the one. whole production yeah makes for a good story but was not fun while it was happening <laughs> right, right 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 yeah <laughs> so we know you stalked twitter now um yeah. <laughs> while you guys were on set were the twitter fans ever of conversation like half the time I think like half the time we were on set, we were literally just like on our chairs, like being like, oh my God, look how funny. Look, 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 look. Yeah. <laughs> especially like, especially Jess and I, like it was like a huge point of conversation for us. We loved, we loved stalking all of you guys. It was so funny. Like seeing your tweets, like while we were shooting season two of like what you thought was happening. Like um, I remember I posted a picture like in, in the, in, in the, in the red car, that's Janae's. But, like, I took the picture while, like, the stunt driver was, like, backing up or whatever. So, it's just, like, it's, like, a man's, like, hairy arm. (laughs) I think it was you, maybe, that tweeted. You were, like, oh, my God, Maeve is third wheeling Bronwyn and Nate right now. I was, like, oh, my God, no. (laughs) Not at all. (laughs) But it was so funny. Analyzing that arm. (laughs) We're, like, who is it? (laughs) I was like this is just the stunt coordinator backing up the car <laughs> um yeah but it was it was funny it like it literally was just Janae's car it was um very funny yeah that is funny and I mean we've had theories but have mm-hmm. any of our tweets ever been the reason behind something that got posted by the cast I think think so I remember I think Jess posted like during season one um they had like posted that picture behind the scenes and they drew all of that purple hair on Anna oh, yes 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 so people thought that I think that was because of a tweet um yeah and I think some like I, I I'm pretty sure some like Nate Wynn stuff was posted after certain tweets were seen and stuff like that so I, I know that yeah there's there's been some uh, <laughs> There's been some pandering for sure. <laughs> you guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what we know the one of us is lying cast loves themed parties. What yeah. was your favorite themed party? Um maybe the like uh the Y2K party. Honestly, oh. it was just so fun because I felt like I'd I'd packed a bunch of clothes for New Zealand that I like hadn't had a reason to wear yet so it was really fun to see everyone sort of do their 
like their take on like uh what was like cool during Y2 it was also just like such a fun night in general um but also selfishly I do want to say um my birthday last year because I turned 21 in New Zealand not last year sorry two years ago when we were shooting season one I turned 21 and the thing about New Zealand is like the legal age over there is 18 so it didn't even really matter <laughs> I was like celebrating my 21st so that I could like feel like some semblance <laughs> of like being home yeah. <laughs> so uh we celebrated my 21st and like there wasn't it wasn't really a theme but I remember a big part of the planning was done by Jess and Jess was like everybody better show up looking their fucking best because like like uh Melissa's like a fashion girl like she's gonna you got you guys have to like put on a like a show for her and everyone showed up looking ama- like Barrett pulled up in a blazer and like <laughs> it's been like a running like uh a running not joke but like a thing where we've just teased him forever because he never takes off that fucking Indiana Jones hat <laughs> so I remember Jess like being like yeah I threatened him like if he shows up in that hat like I'm t- I told him that he wouldn't be allowed to go in and like he showed up in like a little blazer it was like <laughs> so it wasn't really a theme but it was so sweet to see everyone just like caring so much because I had no idea like I was surprised um I thought Jess was just taking me out to dinner with like Kareem and Sarah or something and I was like damn that really forgot I was like, oh, that is such a big milestone birthday yeah. over here in the of course, US. Of course. Like to miss so that. Yeah, but it was the fun. Like everyone, everyone came and pulled a look. It was so sweet. Everyone was like looking their best, just so perfect. <laughs> like it did mean a lot to me. It was so sweet. I love that. That's so adorable. And which three cast members do you think would survive in a horror movie? Oh, okay. Uh Marianne Lee, because she's like tough as nails she will like I can confidently say like I do think she would like beat a bitch up and like yeah no she's like she's tough as she's so tough she's like I mean she boxes like she her training like when we're not like she's like a boxer like she loves uh boxing so like I know that she could like uh punch a zombie and just like actually actually kill it. like <laughs> she would, no she would she would yeah she's tough as shit um Jess because Jess is also tough as shit and like incredibly like I don't know Jess is like like they're very like perceptive and how to get out of like a situation I feel like they're very like built for that and then third I would say me because I think I'm really I'm very good at getting out of like sticky situations and also just like physically I'm very like small so I can probably like fit in spaces and (laughs) quite easily I don't know I'm like I can uh yeah it's very I can like just slip through the cracks and like be fine so the three of you would each have like a different part to kind of like oh exactly if the three (laughs) together like there's no stopping us we're like you know like you you put us in the last of us we're we're fine we're fine (laughs) Right. <laughs> you'd all live um, <laughs> so you mentioned that you have a social medias that aren't public have you ever interacted with the fan under a secret name or account and they have no clue and you don't have to say like the name or anything no 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 I don't um my my accounts that are private um I've never like used it to talk to anyone whenever I like have talked to fans of the show and stuff I've done it um through like my Instagram basically (laughs) Um, which is my only public social media but I will say I don't think it counts as an interaction but like I have seen a lot of like TikTok edits of like Maeve and Janae and stuff and like I've liked quite a few and I think that some accounts have caught on to that and found my (laughs) account which is a problem but uh that's kind of the extent of like anonymous interactions I would say yeah because Jess had made a fake account last year so November 2021 they did <laughs> oh, no. I figured it out <gasps> is it Jess confirmed 
That's so funny. They're crazy for that. It, it was five minutes and everyone. They Wait, used, how did everyone, I don't, how did everyone find out? Well, they used an unseen picture of uh, Marta. Yes. <laughs> and, um. Wait, what was the picture? It was them in the homecoming episode. Like, I can send it to you. It was. Jess, Jess cropped, uh them and I out of that picture because we did like a oh, like <laughs> yeah we did like a double like a double like little couples like <laughs> so actually, I do know what picture you're talking about like Cooper and Marianne they are like kind of like snuggled yeah. with each other sort of yeah Jess and I were on the other side like across from them doing like the same thing in the <laughs> so and- that should, they should, uh, Jess should post the full picture actually I think we might have to get that to happen because that was I can see if I can find it actually. Because really and then I had DM'd the account that Jess was behind, obviously knowing it was someone. I'm like, did someone yeah. post like did I miss something? Like who posted this? And then they deactivated. <laughs> <laughs> so that was that. Hmm. I'm trying to find it because I know I have it. I believe. <laughs> Let me see, let me see, let me see. Somewhere here for sure. I still have like my BTS folder from the first season. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. Oh, was it this photo? Yes. yes. This is the whole pick. Oh my gosh. Wait. Yeah, it was like a little, it was like a little double. <laughs> It feels so crazy to see it now that it's like the whole photo. <laughs> That's very funny that Jess accidentally uh tried to make an account and used her photo that wasn't out. That's very funny. <laughs> yeah. That yeah, that picture. That's so weird to see. But um any memorable Twitter moments that you saw that you can kind of point out? Hmm. I think they're all like I'm trying to think of more specific moments but they're all so memorable because like all of them would give us such a laugh like we did talk about it on set so much and if we were weren't weren't on set we were literally like texting them to each other um god I'm trying to think I guess I don't know no like particular particular moment comes to mind but just like I think the most entertaining thing for us was like reading everyone's like theories and trying to put things together from like pictures and then like you guys either being like totally right which was very creepy or just like so <laughs> far off that it was like also so funny like the the picture I posted with the arm and like yes. <laughs> people on Twitter were like oh my god Nate I was like no nope. <laughs> no that's just the stunt driver <laughs> no no <laughs> um but yeah I think I think the theories were like consistently yeah. the, the funnest thing for us to talk about definitely and um your favorite movie of all time or favorite movies my favorite movie of all time um is almost famous uh directed by cameron crow it came out in the year 2000 but it's the director's cut that's my favorite movie the like theatrical cut i love it but my favorite favorite ever of all time ever and i don't think it'll ever change it's been my favorite for ever is the director's cut of almost famous um Check that out. But I did rewatch the Before trilogy recently, and I do really love it. I think it's like my favorite collection of romance movies ever. And um, Paris, Texas is a perfect movie to me. I've never heard of that one. I'll have to check it's it out. So, it's beautiful. If you like, I mean, all of them will pull at your heartstrings. Like every every movie I just mentioned will make you cry. Oh my gosh! Okay, every- I'm trying to like get into like my <laughs> film era, so I will have to oh, yeah. make recommendations and like watch them but <laughs> yeah so trying to get into that like setting up my letterbox I'm like <laughs> oh letterbox is my favorite it's like it's I that's the only way I can keep track of everything I love yeah. letterbox <laughs> yeah it's so fun and who are your top five or just a few of your favorite musical artists right now hmm. okay my favorite musician ever like all time um is Fiona Apple she's like she's been my favorite since I was like 14 and I don't think that'll ever change I think she's the most like brilliant lyricist ever like her every single lyric of hers 
just like really clicks with me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then second, uh, Lana Del Rey, of course, obviously she's perfect. <laughs> New album dropped last night. Listened to it immediately. So good. Um, yeah, I love Lana. Her unreleased stuff is like perfect. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Those are like my two like consistent. I mean, I literally I could just like list like the the sad girl indie playlist off of Spotify, <laughs> just like Mitski, Phoebe Bridgers, Mazzy Star, like all of that. Like honestly, like I do actually. I I that's that I do listen to that shit. <laughs> that's like here. Um, let me see. Let me see. I love. I've been listening to a lot of Rosalia recently. And like a lot of hyper pop, I do really love hyper pop. So like, mm-hmm. oh, Caroline Polachek is one of my favorite yes. artists. Yes. I think she's so, she's so brilliant. Her like, she's unmatched. Like she clearly mm-hmm. knows what she wants. And actually on that wave, I think like Grimes, Dido, uh, Image and Heap, um, Charlie XCX, like yes. just all of the, all of the like artsy girls, like Bjork awesome love yes. work perfect um yeah it's a lot of like Fiona Lana Grimes uh Caroline uh Charlie it's just a <laughs> that. it's a great mix yeah. oh I love uh Biba Doobie right now her new album oh yes, yes so, so album, yeah. perfect. you should listen to I think my favorite on the new album is uh Sunny Day and Glue Song Glue Song is so cute I think it's I will sweet. check those out. I'll check those out. Yeah, I, I love finding new music, especially like spring play- playlists coming in. So mm-hmm. have to make one. But Melissa, thank you so much. This was such a great interview. And I'm so glad that we were able to talk about May for a little Thanks bit. Thanks for having me.